everyone, Miss Carrie here from Miss Carrie's Creations. Today we are going to do a little mini Cricut class. We are going to talk about what is new in Cricut Design Space. Now it's been a few months since I have done one of these update videos, so you may have already discovered some of these features. Today I'm going to talk to you about the operation option that was once called line type. We're going to talk about the new offset tool, locating your image sets, we're also going to talk about some of the new save options and talk about the Cricut community. All right, let's go ahead and go into Cricut Design Space. So we're going to start out in the canvas and take a look at a few of the things that have changed. First of all, you are going to see the word operation here in this edit bar. This used to say line type. The word line type might be a new term for you. Line type refers to the way your machine interacts with the material. Is it going to cut it, draw, engrave, that sort of thing. Now when I go under operation, you are going to see a long list of line types. That is because I have my maker selected. If I change to my explore machine, there are a few less line type options or operation options. And when I go to my joy, there are only two operations that I can choose from. We're going to go ahead and go back to the maker. So I can choose any of these operations or line types for my image here. On this egg, it is currently a basic cut. I could change it to a wavy cut or perforate cut. I could even draw it with a pen or choose to create a foiled image. I can also score it, deboss it, engrave it, or turn it into a print and cut simply by clicking on one of those operation types. Over here in the layers panel, you will see that that line type changes. These two other eggs are still basic cuts. This egg has turned into a print and cut. Next to the line type, you are going to see a little ink blot. Right now it has a question mark because I have multiple layers selected. If I choose only one of the layers, I can change the material color. So this is the same. This is just like the previous versions of Cricut that hasn't changed. But when we change this to a pen, you are going to see that there are a couple more options under the pen type. So when I go to a marker and I choose the color of marker I want to use, because I've chosen marker, it's going to give it a little bit thicker of a draw line around this egg. And I'm actually going to separate these so it's a little bit easier for you to see. So you can see that this egg has a nice thick line around it because I chose a marker. If I were to choose a fine point, and let's go ahead and choose a brick color, you can see the line gets a little bit thinner. Cricut is trying to show you a representation of what your line is going to look like when it is drawn with a pen. So depending on how thick that pen is, that's going to change the thickness of the line. This also occurs when you choose the foil tip. So when we choose a fine foil tip, you're going to see a thinner line, a medium foil tip, will give you a little bit thicker line and a bold foil tip will give you the thickest line. Remember, you can choose multiple colors for materials, for pens, and for foils in one project. Another new feature that many of us are excited about is the offset feature. This is a feature that quite a few of us have been asking for. You can use the offset feature on both your text and your images. Let's go ahead and insert some text here. I've also gone ahead and inserted a couple of Easter images just so that you can see how this offset feature works with images. Let's go to the text first. When I go up to offset, I have the option to change the distance. I also have the option for a corner type and I can choose whether or not I want to weld the offsets. Let's take a look at the distance first. All I have to do is use this little radio dial to change how large or how small I want this offset. Now when you are going larger, 
it's creating the shadow layer behind my text. All right, so you can see that by this pale blue line around the text. When I go smaller, and it's kind of hard to see on the black, going smaller allows me to create layers within my already typed text. So now the text that I created is turned into the shadow layer. And the offset is creating smaller images within the letters. So we can either create our own shadow layer this way with the text we already have, or we can create a larger shadow layer around the outside of the text. You can also choose the corner type. So right now it's set it rounded. You can also choose a 90 degree angle. You can also choose whether or not you want to weld the offsets. Right now the offsets are welded as one single shadow layer image. If I click this to off, you're going to see that now each individual letter has its own offset. And when I hit apply and I go to make it, when we go to the map preview, it will show you the individual shadow layers that we just created for that text. So now that you can see how it works with text, let's take a look at how it works with images. We're going to go ahead and go to this little bunny image. I'm going to go to offset once again. Over here in the layers panel, my bunny image is grouped. So when I choose offset, it is going to create an offset around that entire grouped image. Once again, I can make it larger if I want, and you could make it smaller if you wanted. You can also choose the corner type once again. So I can choose whether I want it to have rounded corners or square corners. You can also remove the weld offsets option. If I remove the check mark next to weld offsets while this image is grouped, it is going to create three offset images to match the layers in the Easter Bunny image. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply and you can see over here in the layers panel, it did create three offset images. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this bunny so we can see what those little offset images look like. Let's go ahead and ungroup him, and then we can move each one of those layers to their corresponding offsets, all right? So you can create either individual layers of offsets with images or you can create a single shadow layer with your image. Now, we showed with the text one of the reasons why you would use a smaller offset with your letters. What about with images? Why would you want a smaller offset? Well, my mother-in-law is a quilter, and this is going to be something that she is going to enjoy. We're going to go ahead and ungroup this little egg. If she were to create an applique, for this egg, she could create a seam allowance around this image by using that offset feature. So when we go up to offset, we can make this a little bit smaller and you can even type in the inches. So if she's wanting a quarter inch seam allowance, she could do a negative 0.25 inches. This would give her exactly a quarter inch seam allowance. Now that we've created this offset that is a quarter inch smaller than the egg itself, we can change the line type or the operation to create a line using the washable fabric pen. So my mother-in-law could go up to operation, she can change this to pen, then she's going to go ahead and choose a marker and under the list of markers, we have a washable fabric marker. She can go ahead and click on washable fabric marker, attach these two images, and now we have created a line to help her with her seam allowance around this applique egg. So that is another fun way to use that offset feature. Something else that you might have noticed in the Design Space update is that your image library comes up right away when we click images. So I'm going to go ahead and hit images. And as you can see, all the images that I have available are right here 
on my screen. Just like in the past, we have all of the filter options available to us. Some of them have changed slightly, but most of them are the same. I do like that Cricut is starting to add more images in other languages. For those of you who are struggling to find your Cricut collections, image sets, or cartridges, those three terms mean the same thing, here is a little trick for you. Go ahead and go up to the word category and click on all images. This will bring you back to the category page. Under highlighted categories, you're going to see the term image sets. Go ahead and click on image sets. Under ownership, go ahead and click the plus sign. Choose purchased and you will see a list of all the image sets, collections, or cartridges that you own. You can also just type in a specific Cricut collection that you are looking for. If I type in Daisy Meadows, it gives me three results. When I go over to ownership and click purchase, it's going to bring up the Daisy Meadows collection that I own. So for those of you who struggle to find the Cricut collections or image sets that you own, this is one of the easiest ways to find them. There are also a few new save features available to you. When you go to save a project, you have a new window that pops up. You can type in the title and this will be the title of your project. Now you have the option to save it to a collection. If you have Cricut Access, you can create an unlimited number of collections. If you don't have Cricut Access, you can only create five collections. If you would like to learn more about Cricut Access, I've put a link to that in the description below. When you are saving a project, you can choose to save it to one of the collections you've already created, or you can create a new collection. You don't have to save projects to collections. This is just a nice way to organize all the projects that you own. To see all of your projects and your collections, go ahead and go up to the right side of the screen, click My Projects. Over on the left, you will see your collections that you have created. You can edit the title of those collections if you would like, or you can go ahead and delete them if you would like. When you remove the collection, it will not delete the projects. It will only delete the collection title. So don't worry if you've decided that you're no longer going to use that collection title. You can go ahead and delete it. The projects are still going to stay in your project collection. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Collections is just an easy way to organize your projects. I have saved over 386 projects. When I click on bags, boxes, and tags, I can see all of the projects I have saved in my bags, boxes, and tags collection. If I wish to search my projects for a specific project, I can go up to the search bar and type in the search parameter I'm looking for. This allows me to see all of the projects that I have created with the word Valentine. To organize projects in two categories, I just have to click this word organize, scroll through and click on the projects that I wish to place in a previously created collection or a newly created collection. I'm going to go down to the word that says next. And again, this little window pops up and I can either place it in an available collection or I can create a new collection to organize these projects into. How cool is that? The organizer in me just loves this feature. Now remember, if you have Cricut Access, you do have unlimited number of collections that you can create. If you do not have access, you will only be able to create five collections. The last thing I want to show you is the new Cricut Community feature. When we go to the home screen and we scroll down just a little bit, you are now going to see from the community. And this offset inspiration term may change depending on what Cricut decides to feature for the month. You can view all projects that people like me in the Cricut community have created. 
you can search for specific projects in the Cricut community on this page. These Cricut community members have created these for you to use. Some of the images you may need to purchase. If you wish to search for a specific community member, you can go back to the home page. Above this from the community carousel, you're going to see search for community members. We can go ahead and type in a community member that we are looking for and see their profile and projects they have available for us to use. One last setting that I want you to check before we leave Design Space today is under your settings. Go ahead and go up to the little three hamburger lines and scroll down to settings. Not many of these items have changed. You still have the option to choose your language and your canvas grid and your units. But one of the newer options is saving for offline and canvas style. In the past, all of your projects have always saved to the Cricut Cloud. You didn't have to add anything to your personal device. Well, now that Cricut allows us to work without the internet, we can save some of our projects to our device and be able to create them without internet access. I do suggest that you set your default setting to cloud only. This will prevent you from having your current device filled with projects. If you choose cloud and computer, every single project that you save will not only be saved to the Cricut Cloud, it will also be saved to the device that you are using, which means that every image, font, and little bits of data that are inside that project are going to be saved to your device. And this is going to fill up the memory in your device very quickly. So to prevent that from happening, I would suggest that your default setting is cloud only. For those of you who might have an older computer or an older device, you might be struggling with the new Design Space updates. You do have the option to switch to the classic version of the Canvas. When we select classic, you're going to see that the Canvas changes a little bit. It's going to go back to line type. I now only have four squares instead of eight squares on my grid. And I also will no longer have the offset feature. For some of your older models of computers, or for those of you who might not have a very good processor, this might be a better option for you though, so that Cricut Design Space runs smoothly for you. If you have a computer tech person who is a friend, I would suggest you talk to them and see which version of Cricut Design Space would be best for you to use with your model of computer. Now remember, we talked about saving projects to the cloud versus saving projects to your device. If there are specific projects that you would like to save to your device so that you can cut them out when you don't have internet access, go ahead and go up to My Projects. Go to the project that you wish to use while you are offline. Click on the three little dots. Choose Save for Offline. And all of the images and fonts and data in this project will be saved to the device that you are currently using. I hope that today's video has helped you a little bit to understand some of the new updates in Cricut Design Space. If you would like to see any of my previous Cricut tutorials, you can click on any of those collection icons above. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you are notified when I add a new video to this channel. I hope you have a wonderful week. I can't wait to see what you create.